Welcome to the Conference of Movements, com26b.com. We've been broadcasting since uh, November 9 to create a, blo a blueprint for the future of humanity. And today we are going to create a blueprint for water. This is the Water is Life Conference, and our goal is to create a water blueprint that allows everybody on Earth to have fresh water and also to restore the oceans and the lakes and the rivers and all of the waters of the world. Um, this blueprint that we're creating together uh, will take one year time. So we're just planting the seed to create this blueprint. And today we are honored to have with us Yanling Duan. Uh, she is a Y investor, social artist, systematic imagineer, and an ordained Taoist shaman. That, that's a lot com in com combining in one person of all those different talents. And she can talk a little bit about herself and she's doing a, a meditation for us. And um, Yanling, take it away. Thank you, David. Um, thanks everyone who's uh, here and now. And um, my name is Yanling. Um, today we enter this one hour, I would say, sacred digital space. And I'm sending the connection signals from Ibiza, Spain, physically. However, I believe that our collective being are connected cross dimension, cross timelines and cross lineages. And that's part of the reason I'm here. So whoever tuned in this platform, I believe there's um, many nations, warriors, uh, social catalysts, systematic changers, and together with tech wizards and healing artists, all of us ask a question. Things are going this direction for so long, and what shall we do? And one of the my test <laughs> tagline for double explore base, which we've been initiating movement, can have some kind of answer, starting with, can we imagine the great return? What is the great return? And where we can be really united? So today is a very auspicious day. Many people understand that it's um, Lakshmi, the prosperity goddess guarded the day, the, the holiday of the light. However, very few, I believe, and it's part of a reason I would like to be here to share. Um, it is also Han Yi Jie. It's one of the biggest, one of the three biggest honoring festival in Chinese tradition to honor the great ancestors. And uh, I've been talking to David before as a global citizen, planetary super node, working on really in quite a cross-cultural realms, uh, I would like to highlight that Chinese is one of the biggest indigenous people group. As far as time can recall, this is a land I'm cultivated and preserved, inherited the, the ultimate ancient wisdom together with many other traditions and nations. So today I would like to um, honor this space with all our ancient traditions usually do, starting to honor solar god, lunar gods, stellar gods, and also our great ancestors, go all the way back to the ancestral spirit. So I will invite one of my dear friend partner here and to take us with the company of the crystal chime sound and if you feel called to enter this space, I will offer one of the downloaded ancestral prayer to honor this time and space and this very unique union. And in the spirit and intentions of decode the spirit of water.
the true essence of the great ancestors passed on in pulsating life forms without showing its shapes or forms cannot be seen or taught but it contains all there is the origin is the great ancestor's birthplace Great ancestor is the beginning of the beginning. The great ancestors is alive in our inheritance. The great ancestor is behind all rebirths. Along the lifelines, the great ancestors designs all encounters and interconnections. Great ancestors nurtures all family lives. <sighs> Let me salute to you as your children. Let me bow to you as your grandchildren. Let me look up to you, the great ancestor. There's only one human family tree. There's no other family here. May you bless us, children. Grandchildren, to fulfill your wish on earth of us enjoying reunion of our family. Whoever tones in at this moment with this topic of spirit of water must be familiar with Dr. Emoto's work, The Water Knows the Answer. It was probably one of the most important first step in our modern past century to discover how such a simple magic, the frequency, the vibration, the mesmerizing shape and forms of a singing wa single water, chop, can be changed by such a subtle influence like a language. It is a scientific research, but behind it, there's so much more. There's a great intelligence in water, 
not in the traditional sense of intelligence as we know it, but this flow, spontaneous awareness that rests in its own nature. That is a mystery. The waters on the womb is a great mystery already. And then think about it, entire of lifetime, so much of our life is consists of water. We all know that. Isn't that the best way to decode the mystery of life through study, the body, mind, and spirit of water? As a former curator, at this very moment, across in Asia in Shanghai, Shanghai Biennale is hosting Body of Water, inviting architects, designers, artists, innovators to tackle what is in water, what we can do to purify water, to raise awareness about the importance of water, and to find solutions for the water issues on the planet. As someone working here, I would like to invite all of, all of us to dive into another aspect, the other side of the corn, the spirit of the water. How? Again, since I introduced myself as a Taoist or didn't, we would say a uh, Shishong. I will invite anyone who are interested in Taoist effortless living, Wu Wei Zhi Dao, to uh, use water as a symbol to understand this unspeakable Tao. Um, according to this Taoist framework of thinking, it's hardly a religion or dogma or even theory. It is pretty much just a very deep, profound wisdom that distilled from the unspeakable. Lao Tzu mentioned water represents seven virtues of Tao. It almost in, contains that we can use water to understand this unspeakable. What are the seven virtues? I would like to take that time, dive into, and invite you to dive into the unspeakable water. Tao Te Ching is one of the second most translated book, a least understood one. It takes us 30 years to practice Tai Chi. We can say barely graduate. It takes us lifetimes and lifetimes to understand. So thanks to water can give us such a grasp a concept to understand. So we use Tao Te Ching as a mantra. So whoever there are interested in this unspeakable, when speaking, I would like to you to be embracing the sound of this ancient text, similar as Indian mantra you normally listen and chant. Ju Shan Di, Xin Shan Yuan. Yu Shan Ren, Yan Shan Xin, Zheng Shan Zhi, Shi Shan Neng, Dong Shan Shi. The first virtue. Of the spirit of water, Ju Shan Di. Water coming from heaven, at least the place nearest to heaven, top of the mountain, and is willingly go all the way down, 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 down. Humble, going down. Passing everywhere benefits to anywhere, anyone come across her way or his way. Verse 
Thirty One. Ju Shan Di. You may go down, you may go low, but that's where you are successful because you accomplish your mission. Enter to the ocean at the end by going down, not climbing up. Virtue Two. Xin Shan Yuan. Heart. Benefits when we are still, and water can contain the most profound volume. Everything within. The deeper you go, the more quiet you become. Virtue two: How to embrace and how to be deep, even be silent when you go deep. Spirit of water. Virtue three: Yu Shan Ren. To be. Hello. What happened? There seems to be have some kind of a break in the transmission with、uh, Yanling、uh, Duan, so we have to wait till she comes back on. Hi, Sherry. Hi, I can't see.、Um, my screen is black. Can you see me? No, it's black also.、Um, yeah. Is、Maybe、that something see- that Alice might need to do? I don't know.、Um, Did I log maybe, out? And log back in. I'm gonna log yes, out. Yes, please. Yes, maybe there's something wrong. Yes. So as you've heard about the、um, the water, water contains、uh, many mysteries, and we thank Yanling,、uh, ordained Buddhist monk, for sharing that with us, and she's gonna come back right after. We're having some technical difficulties. Of a break in the transmission, but we'll resume、uh, very shortly. And not only about the mysteries of water, because、uh, the conference itself is called "Water is Life," and we cannot live without water. There's no human being that can live without water, and we take it for granted sometimes、uh, about the power. And the importance of water in our daily lives, because it's always there. But there are situations in、uh, some countries that have droughts, and during those times,、uh, you can see many people dying and find out、uh, water, the, the importance of water in people's、uh, lives. Also, water is not only important in people's lives. But it is part of、uh, Mother Earth. So Mother Earth, you can say the blood of Mother Earth is water that flows through her, and bring gives everybody else nurtures us, and give us life. And also, hi. Hopefully,、uh, hi Sherry, you came back on. Well, I was just sharing the importance of water. Yanling is、uh, her transmission dropped off. But、oh, wait till、no. she comes back on, and Sherry Lewis is one of the three peacemakers, and we're just discussing the spirit of water、um, from your tradition.、Uh, what do you know about the spirit of water, the water itself, the, the energy and the water,、uh, Sherry? Well, 
I believe in hopefully a lot of traditions uh, it's seen how vital water is um, for us. It is a part of life. It is a life source. So um, yeah. And um, without uh, our water, what do we have? You know, it's, we have no life period without water, it, no existence. Um, so we do need to look into our water quality on a global level. Uh, I really appreciate what was being spoken about and spoken of on looking at water quality and the people that are coming together in a good way that are also in the technology industry to help resolve some of the issues that are going on with our water. Um, as you know, David, I just started a petition, uh, Friendly for Humanity Technology, that benefits our health. And I think that we have great minds that can come together right now to really work on the issues of saving our water because our water is the veins of our mother earth. And um, from uh, where you come from, there are some uh, water issues that are affecting uh, many indigenous people around the world, right, Sherry? Well, absolutely. So my, the ne uh, relatives, you know, are suffering from transformers going through the region that with the radiation is is a huge effect and the uranium. Uh, there's also arsenic in, in the water as well. So there's definitely major water issues. And of course, uh, my Lakota relatives and Standing Rock that are dealing with Dapple, but there's so many other pipelines, you know, the Keystone, but many, many other pipelines and also natural gas pipelines that need to be evaluated that are under our water uh, systems as well. So later on during the broadcast, we also have some special guests we invited to talk about uh, the importance of water at our Water is Life uh, conference. It includes Ken from the Water is Life Foundation. Uh, they delivered um, clear fresh water. It's a, one of the world's largest charities for fresh water. And it's uh, helping deliver uh, water to, um, I believe, more than 46 different countries to improve, improve people's lives. And then uh, we also have in the program with uh, Ed Coban and Joanne Shenandoah. They were um, generous enough to provide us uh, with pre-recorded um, um, pre-recording of their music. Uh, Joanne Shenandoah is a award-winning Grammy award-winning uh, uh, musician. Uh, that is uh, uh, indig indigenous to the Haudenosaunee, um, and she she won so many Grammy awards. She's uh, probably the um, world's most renowned uh, indigenous uh, musician, and uh, her father um, goes back generations. Actually, when the first uh, um, the people from Mayflower landed uh, on the shores of uh, Turtle Island, they call it in North America. Uh, it was their family, the Shenandoahs, the chief, uh, the chiefs that met them. So it, their lineage goes back way back, and uh, we're very lucky to have her to on the show to perform. Then we also have a panel discussion uh, dealing with the Dakota Access Pipeline and pipelines around the world, and we invited some special guests, water protectors from the Standing Rock, and uh, hopefully. Uh, all of them, uh, we sent out invitation and many people answered and hopefully they'll come on and we'll have a panel discussion to talk about the, um, the progress of protecting the waters at Standing Rock and around the world through and pipelines. Mean, oh, sorry, David, ahead, I'm not meaning to interrupt sure. you and I wasn't meaning to turn my head, but on that note, um, actually I'm getting a message on one of our guests later. So as you're speaking, I am not being rude by looking at this message. I just want you to know that it happens to be um, pertaining to what we're speaking on. So, and somebody trying to join us. So I'm going to just excuse myself for just a second to look at this message, David. And um, okay. yes. So just excuse me for a second while I look at this. Okay. 
So um, there is also, uh, we also invited um, a company to talk about uh, filters, water filters. Uh, they have um, incredible technology that can uh, um, provide clean water to many people on the planet. Uh, they're doing their two or, uh, companies, uh, the, the One World Filter uh, Foundation, they want, their, their dream is to br uh, bring uh, clean water to everyone on Earth uh, using a new type of filtering technology. They're going to be talking about it. And I hope uh, Yan Ling uh, comes back soon because uh, we love to have uh, her continue her meditation and uh, provide the wisdom on the spirit of water, which is uh, really uh, uh, necessary. Um, yeah, Yan Ling, uh, yes, you were cut off for quite a long time. Uh, <laughs> that's, this is technology we're dealing with, you know, <laughs> right? I guess a different frequency, isn't it? <laughs> so sorry uh, how long I was off. Well, you were talking about, uh, you were just started talking about the first virtue and you just, oh you were, God. yes. <laughs> So, would you like to just continue, uh, Sarah, with us? Oh yeah, I mean that's that that's will be really interesting. That's super interesting. I will always say that technology runs different frequencies. And uh, sorry for wait, keep you waiting. I didn't notice. And uh, yeah, can we can we continue that? And the yes, sorry yes, for please us. continue. Yes, please continue. <laughs> so we just enter the first virtue. That's a very interesting. As I mentioned, let's take it as life as rehearsal. Now we are in run. Um, anyone knows about Tao Te Ching? Uh, as I mentioned, the second most translated uh, book besides Bible. We consider it takes lifetime to um, understand, but I would like to take the magic number seven here to uh, to guide us and to share some of my lifetime's dissertation of the wisdom which is still we consider really some some piece and parts of it and seven virtues are considered to be capture the spirit of water as we mentioned that today we do look for solutions to water but without understand the spirit of water, we're still treating water as resources, something feed human needs instead of re really enter this planetary age that we live in the echo centered age. Human just one part of the sentient being. This big shift is probably the number one most fundamental shift that our ancestors, our generations to come will be thank us for if we can do that a great return from this very critical moment. So while we're talking about water, we usually come to solutions, technologies, and which I will guide that later. But let's continue to be back the red track, seven virtues. I started with one, Ju Shan Di. Uh, water originated always from the place close to heaven, as we know, and as a picture behind me, Mount Kailash, originated four major rivers that nurtured the human civilizations. And that's what revered by most um, belief systems, uh, especially in Asia, which we believe also part one of the most important points that original spiritual teachings as of today and carry on lineages without stopping and water probably carry lots of code from that so water coming from the far and high up but chose to go going down to wherever it needs it because it's going down it can be successfully reach the ocean reach to the success by her or its definition so number one leadership virtue is going down, 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 rather up, up, up. And this is virtue one, spirit water. And spirit water virtue two, xin shan yuan. 
as we uh, believe that why there are many um, knowledge uh, saints, sage, enlightened being are so quiet, right? Some youthful spirits always find it very hard to understand. <laughs> and in, in, if you observe water, the deeper the water goes, the more quiet it gets. And one of the virtue of water and reflexing human being behaviors is also, can we be quiet? Can we share knowledge when we really dive deep beyond the noise, beyond the eagerness? Xin Shan Yuan. Respect the quietness and silence of some beings because their knowing might be more profound than a few quotes and few few words that's very catchy and trend fashionable today. Can we listen to the quietness? Xin Shan Yuan. Virtue three, Yu Shan Yuan. What is considered to be the symbol of kindness? Because it's always giving, it's always contributing, and it has no discrimination, never ask for return. And is that a, that's the symbol of how we're going to treat our social situations or not? And that's a, one of the virtues that really teach us how can we be giving without expecting return. That's virtue water, spirit water number three. Number four, virtue four, Yan Shan Xing. Water has to run to so many different landscapes, desert, rocks, green field. Then it creates different sounds. It creates different sounds according to different contexts, but it continues its own essence, never change. And that's part of the believe that how we can treat the differences in different cultures can we just be different because we are in different contexts and respectfully follow but never never lose where we came from the essence of where we came from that's considered to be spirit water virtue four yan shan xin spirit water virtue five zheng shan zhi and this is one of the most important teaching for rulers, teachers, and leaders. To understand, to be able to consolidate all differences, become the real leader, there is something called a compromise. There is something we could call a doing and being, doing and non-doing balance. How can we be do less? no effort and be able to continue to treat the communities, corporations and country as easy as water flow. And that is a technique and virtue that water teach so-called ruling class at ancient time. Today we call self-leaders of every, every sovereign beings of today. Virtue four, six. Spirit of water, Shi Shan Na. You see, water can nurture life. It can really water the plants. We use it to wash our clothes. We even use it to generate power. We use it for transportation. It's multifunctional. It doesn't need to have a title. It is just want to be of use. Shi Shan Na. Can we be like a water and never tied into who you are, what you can do, but constantly transforming for the needs of your community wants, for the situation of today, and also continues to carry on the purpose of serving. And that's a really great virtue for leaders and today's catalysts, multi polymath to really consider. Virtue six, and last but seventh, according to Tao's belief, we can master many things, but we must surrender one thing is divine timing. And that's why as a Taoist shaman, the only rule 
you have is to follow the celestial calendar, which guides you where and how to move. Because there's more danger of making hasty, unconsiderate actions than doing nothing. So the eagerness of any mover or shakers who like to do wonderful deeds for the world, but without great timing, that will be can be complete considered to be disaster. So be mastery of the timing. Dong shan shi, water knows where to stop to be a pound, and when to freeze in the winter, and when to、um, rise up in the sky. So the transformation because of the time. And the radical transformation because of time, and follow that. And all the seven virtues can consume into one, which is of service. Spirit of water is of service. Simple. As we say, 大道至简 the most simplest truth contains all truths within. So seven virtue is important for today for all our social catalysts, innovators, all the people who want to make a change, especially concerned about the water issue of the world. I had a great talk with David before, and that's why I'd love to contribute a little sparkle of this Eastern wisdom into this container, together with other original nations as one of the planet we're being, but born, raised in China and Mongolia. We believe that before we do anything, the virtue is most important. Before we do anything, honor the spirit ancestor is more important. We are really coming to this age, realizing that the doing need have another definitions. Is to understand, honor the holistic system. Understand this is not a world, human centric world can sustain. It is a holistic world that contains. Everything, and we have to honor that. So, for that, I will leave this precious time to the doing part, and hopefully, when we can embrace the virtue of seven spirit of water, we can really treat water not only resource we can consume and use, but it would definitely need it still. So we can honor it, but we still can find water and make the water available. To the place and people that need it.、Uh, for the next 15 minutes, I would like to really honor George and his family, tirelessly working on to bring water、uh, to、um, the purified water into the places in the world. And、uh, George, are you there? And、yes. share your.、Uh, he's a great friend, Blockbase Super Node. Have been presenting this great work in Blockbase in Davos. And、uh, also a musician, but today I think he will share his dream and his father's dream、uh, to bring water to the original nations. So, George, please welcome.、Um, hello, Yan Ling. Yes.、I'm、very glad you. to be with、yes. you all, and I greet you all, and I hope I can share something.、Um, can you see the? Yes. Can you see the?、Um, yes, we can see a screen, computer screen. Yes, but yes. not the the PowerPoint. Not. Not yet. No, not yet. Not yet. So, excuse me. One second. I'll ask for help. <laughs> So David, this long gong was a very fancy、uh, concert、uh, orchestrated. Yeah, it's all like a living room technical hit pickup pickups. Yeah, Yan Ling,、uh, thank you for sharing、uh, the wi-、uh, the wisdom, because you know, original nations.、Uh, when we're talking about original nations,、uh, it, for indigenous is uh, uh, it, it, it is、uh, there are fifty to around. Fifty-two tribes in China, himself of one hundred and twenty-nine million indigenous people. So there, it's quite large. So thank you.、Um, a lot of people do not know that they think、uh, tri- tribal nations or tribes only are in North America and South America, but is worldwide. 
George, are you ready? Yes, yes, I'm ready. Thank you as well very much. And also I would like to uh, mention that also I've had um, uh, ma for many years contact with the Haudenosaunee and tried to um, help in the water problem there. So I will show you some pictures um, about the research. I will try it here to make it bigger. So, um, well, as Jan Link mentioned Emoto, maybe I just mention my path has been from the blood to the water. I started with blood microscopy and then I met Dr. Emoto and we have had for many years contact and my son, he worked with him about 12 years. He has had a European lab from Hardo Life. And <clears throat> my way had been more not with the crystals. What we can see here, that is a crystal from a cricket sound. This is a crystal of the rock water. And we have a possibility to find water everywhere in the world. Even in the desert, it's most easy to find. And this water comes out of the rock. And already Moses hit on the rock, and maybe he that was quite a knowledge in the same direction. Well, um, I will show here, for example, this is some some water in Mecca, and you can see the different wells. They are all rock water wells, and it's a water star. Here we see um, it alive, and here we can see, for example, an oasis that is also a rock water always, and it has the same amount of water. For example, here you can see an oasis, and one could drill before and after and get water under high pressure. Um, this was a science first um, being public by Stefan Rees, and then <clears throat> some other people um, went is his, in his footsteps, and one was Hunt, Hunton Reader, and I can show you, this is a drilling in Eritrea from him, where all people said there is no water, the scientists said there is no water. Um, this is Stefan Ries, who was the first man who found this water. You can find in YouTube an, a lecture from him about one hour. Um, I just will show you, or maybe first here, this is in Switzerland, um, a little city that has five wells of water, rock water, which um, Mr. Reader found for them. Well, this is in Iran, in, it was in the desert loot, but we didn't have the right drilling equipment. You need a double um, head driller, and this was not possible to find. Um, here you see um, Mr. Reader, and this is Norbert Zibis, another scientist who first learned from Mr. Reader, and then he developed this research quite much more perfect today over Google Earth. He can find and tell the exact depth and quantity and so on. I will just show you a picture of a dried drop from Oasis that is um, um, uh, bottled water in Egypt. And you can see this beautiful lemnis cakes, and um, it's really a picture of life. Later on, I will show you pictures um, where you can see how a dead water would look like. Well, I jump now. We made um, in Spain 
a project with 15 little lakes you can see here in the Estremadura and um, we try to find and show on by this way over Google Earth where water is to find and <clears throat> this is for example then the way how it is shown by Google Earth that you can see where the water flows and then by drilling we make then photos from the place itself and um, Norbert is guiding the drilling until it is on here you can see on different places where we have been drilling one some um, words still about you see here two different waters one is vein water or rock water and it doesn't mix because the density is different and vein water also the angle is a special angle between h and o here for example is a picture of a dried water drop where even the minerals show this structure of the water well water has memory and you can see for example this is a trilobit it is a water drop of the ocean and in the dried water drop you find the information still of a fossil that is since thousand years not anymore on this earth this is not fishes it are not fishes it is also an information in a dried water drop it looks completely like a fish but it is just uh, uh, information this is another dried water drop and it looks like a plant or just a river that is on the end where it dries still shows similar um, formation this is a formation done by sound from the word and we also made crystal pictures of divine names informed the water maybe it comes still later and <clears throat> maybe i show here <clears throat> you see that even the animals this is a drop of milk in the coffee the shape of flow and a friend gabriel kellerman he even could show um with a certain frequency on the surface of a liquid it came a human face here you can see the flow forms well nowadays this is our big problem with um, contaminated water and you can see for example how not so nice waters here you have nice structures like plants but you see there's a lot in the water what is not so nice or even here like burnt out holes for example when a mobile antenna it affects the water and the water below looks like this i will show you one um, method for example to change water this is a osmose water and this is certain information you get then the water with six structures again this you can find under super coherence return to love in the web page and there's all the information about um, this method um, in earlier times people knew how to store water under the best circumstances or about the high frequency for example here where the people did their washing before praying it was done on golden lines and this is a science here 
I just mentioned very shortly, it is biogeometry, a science of Dr. Karim in Egypt, and we have a lot of research together, and I'm learning very much from him. With him, we made the divine names, we informed um, <clears throat> with a certain amount of divine names, the water, and then we got the crystals of it. And the interesting thing was that the effect on the human body was the same by looking at the crystals like by reciting the divine names. This is, for example, a very beautiful crystal from the divine name God as Light, Nur. And we leave this subject now um, just showing a short photo about the effects of biogeometry. You can see that this is a potato, sweet potato with fresh water, this with salt water, and this with biogeometry and salt water. So th this is a very interesting research, how especially for our time, it is the, the science about the quality of physics, not only the quantity. I show you now some pictures again of different waters. Also, this is a um, <clears throat> tear, for example, and this is a body water of um, a burned um, um, piece where the water is then on a finger. This is under nuclear influence. It's not very nice, but this is a drinking from the tap water taken. Now, <clears throat> I will show you some beautiful waters. Um, this is also a body water. So you see our body needs form-giving life, form-giving forces. This is from the womb of a uh, mother giving birth. And this is a drop of water out of the space Yuri Gagarin gave to a Haudenosaunee elder. This you see is very strong waters from Austria mountains, from a village. Very powerful waters. This is, for example, water from Fiji Island. This is a uh, healing water. This is a uh, healing water. Hmm. This is water with the influence of gold information. That's also a very strong water. And now this is with influence of rosemary. And here we have very interesting forms always. Whereas when the water is not, for example, here, a beautiful pictures how a healing water can, can look like of a um, drop that is just dried. So this would be still a very long um, conference and I would like to finish with that we shall take the water in our heart and mind. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, George. Um, where can we find more information about each one of you where you're working on, uh, what each uh, one of you, where, um, what you're working on, so they can find more, more information from uh, George and also um, Yan Ling. Like, what are, is there a website for this? Well, yes, I think the 
for 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 the project, I would like to really um, strengthen a few things. Also, a way to say goodbye. Uh, one is uh, when you mention about uh, my multi-title. One of the the core concept we talk about investment is how we can use spirit, um, uh, like philanthropy, spiritual philanthropy, and digital currency, and really impact uh, in resources to support a personal planetary upgrade. And that's one of the block-based vision, and that's where I funded, and that's where lots of planetary projects, which including this one George shared, will be able to find. It's a davosblockbase.com. But second thing, I think George is a, such a real a magician, so he didn't mention that one of the, his driving forces about doing this research and doing the poly, poly, cross-pollinating all these knowings and talents is to really bring uh, the drilling technology and this understanding water to uh, Lakota Nation. Right? That was a part of his father's dream. So I hope some of the some of the intentions here can find the resources too. So that the those we are interested can be in touch with us, of course, with Live Hope through uh, David. Before uh, uh, before we go, I'd love to really honor like water is considered to be Yin. Uh, process, right? The feminine, divine feminine. So I saw that, saw the um, rosemary has a heart shape, including all the green taras chanting also have the mother words. So today we come back to spirit water again. So in honor of that, I would like to say goodbye. If you find more information through this platform and through Davos Blow Base, it's all great. Yeah, thank you. So, so sorry I didn't, uh, was having some technical difficulties earlier, but such a pleasure listening to you and your heart, uh, Sherry Lewis here. And I would like to follow through more with what you mentioned with our Lakota relatives, as I do have um, Lakota relatives. And also I believe that uh, even spreading through the other nations throughout uh, would be amazing as well. So thank you so much for your, for your time on that. And uh, George, I, I was just astonished by your your work and uh, what you just showed um, through your slides and just amazing seeing water in that way where people can really visualize what was spoken about earlier uh, and through the spirituality, you know, and really visualize that through the physics. So that is just remarkable. And thank you for that. I hope you all can still hear me because my screen looks frozen. My face looks frozen, we, but I hope yes, you can hear We hear you me. very well. <laughs> okay. yeah. we may, I say, may I say a last <laughs> short thing? Well, it is not was not the Lakota, it was it's now the Navajo, Navajo Nation. But um, as we are um, yes. water, and when we see the beauty of our body waters, for example, this is a picture of saliva and you can see on the left side a sick person and then after being centered how the, so the saliva changed and this is a picture of some drops of blood on a paper and then you put this paper in a um, little bit of water and then you look the water drops under the microscope and what you see is a life force and after a whole day of hard work, you see the life force, how it is less. And then after one hour meditation, the same, the life force is back. Wow. So what we have to understand, uh, really we are water and we have to um, have this life force energies in us. And the food is important. Um, meditation, good air, and so on, and we can make it visible. So thank you very much. Thank you, Philip. I, I, I mean, George, I'm looking for your face here. Uh, there you are. So uh, I think I'm still frozen. And I just, I wanted to thank you again for that. And uh, my extended, you know, I was speaking earlier with David on the Dene, uh, which is the Navajo reservation where we're definitely in need and my relatives out that way, you have the uranium that's in the water. Uh, the water is affected also by the radiation. 
which is is uh, a big thing right now with all the transformers running through. And then, of course, we have arsenic in the water. So it is um, wonderful where your heart is. And I just thank you both so tremendously and so much. Thank and you. thank you all thank very you. much. David, can I offer Thanks. the uh, Green Taras uh, mantra, as we mentioned, to wrap it up? Okay, sure. Yeah, yes, so beautiful. basically we, we mentioned about how mantra, music, and sound really tremendously visibly can help us to restore our life force, and and that's George have so them. And since today is the, the, the Lakshmi Day, and uh, we're really blessed by such a feminine life force. So many people have been asking me when I was chanting Om Tara to Tale Ture Soha, the green Taras, uh, the leading 21 manifestations of Divine Feminine, what that means. So I would like to um, offer this to her and to all the senti beings and for all the one in this sacred space, and especially working towards the Divine Feminine Rising, to um, to explain that what's Om Tale to Tale Tula Soha is. It's, uh, Om is primordial sound, the infinite. Tale, divine mother who liberates from sufferings. Tutale, one who eliminates all fears. Tule, one who grants all successes. Soha, may the blessing of this mantra take root in our hearts. And Om Tare Tu Tare Tu De Soha 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 Om Blessing. Thank you. Thank you all. Thank you for blessing all of mm -hmm. us. Thank you. That's beautiful. Yes. Thank you so much. Look forward to speaking with you again this is just in the, the future. Beginning of the birth, right? Thanks so much for the work. <laughs> That's right. Thank you. Bye. Thank you. Bye. Bye. So, so Bye. next we have with us is uh, Ken from the Water is Life Foundation. Um, and he has been instrumental in bringing fresh water to many countries and communities around the world. And also, not only does he bring water, he also has orphanages actually, and he helps uh, many orphans. And he is holding, uh, he's or organizing many uh, orphanages. And is he on now? Sherry. Hello, Ken. I, you know what, guys? I'm gonna, hi. I'm gonna sign out and sign back in. Am I still frozen, or can you You're guys see still. see me okay, or am I frozen? Okay, so I'm gonna sign out and, and jump back in. So excuse no me very quickly here uh, with these little difficulties, but so Good nice. To see you, uh, Ken. Would you like to introduce your uh, background? I it does uh, doesn't do uh, you. Justice when I introduce you. <laughs> oh no, that's fine. Yes, um, yeah. I'm. Uh, my name is Ken. I'll tell you my story here in just a minute. I've got a slide deck to go through, but um, I uh, founded Waters Life uh, uh, about a decade and a half ago, and I drilled my first well. So uh, it all revolves around an experience and going um, to uh, Kenya and uh, my eyes getting opened up. It's intriguing. Um, I was, I was uh, by Georgian, um, I, I don't remember the lady's name, uh, Yulan, Yulan, is that right? That was just on? Yan, Yan, Yan Ling Duan, yeah. Yan, Yan Ling, Ling. Yan Ling, yeah. Um, <laughs> the, uh, the, you know, the, the thing that you see uh, so vividly uh, when you look at those water droplets and the crystals is that water truly has a life of its own. And, um, you know, since the dawn of mankind, people have gravitated toward water because water is life. And so we created Water is Life um, 
as a, uh, a tool for people to be able to help uh, accomplish the goal of ending the world water crisis. Our goal is to end the world water crisis in the next decade. And we believe that we have technology, we have resources, we just need the, pow the manpower and um, the uh, resources to be able to uh, put the different technologies that are uh, already existing and those that are being created. Uh, into place. One of the cool things for us at Waters Life is we get to work with a lot of high school, college, uh, even down to elementary age students. And we get to be able to see what's coming up with the next generation and the passion that they have to help make a difference and help um, bring uh, life's changing and life uh, saving solutions to the rest of the world. So it's been real exciting uh, for me to see. Um, one of the things that Oh, hey, Sherry, how are you doing? Hi. You made it back. <laughs> You're moving I'm again. Good. I can move. Okay. There you go. Fantastic. Um, but uh, yeah, one of the things that um, that makes Water's Life a little different from other water charities uh, is we work with a lot of other groups and organizations. We feel like it's necessary for all of us to come together, to work together, uh, to be able to bring um, palatable solutions to the people uh, today that are at risk. Uh, globally around the world today, 6,000 people will die because they don't have safe water. 5,000 of those are kids. So we work with a lot of uh, kids. We work with a lot of orphanages and schools, community centers, churches, all kinds of different areas where people naturally kind of come together. Um, and we bring those water solutions in there. Um, what I'd love to do is uh, just kind of give you an overview of Water's Life, what we're doing. Um, We've got some uh, fun videos and things uh, to share with you. So let me see if I can get, uh, see. Okay, got it. Okay. <clears throat> uh, let's see, okay. Let's see if I can get in there. Nope, hang on, I got it on another another desktop, so it's not gonna come over. Ken is way ahead of his time because the Water is Life Foundation set up 10 years ago, Sherry. So mm. isn't that amazing? Yeah, I was thinking that such, you know, it's, well, when you were explaining to me, Ken, David was explaining to me um, about your work and I was very mm -hmm. excited, you know, I was very happy to have you here speaking on these topics. And he mentioned water is life, but he said he really wants to start working with our indigenous nations here. And so when you said that, I thought to myself, wow, he was water is life uh, as this, you know, before the movement at Standing Rock, even though that actually really was already going on 10 years ago, right. but before the, <laughs> the phrase kind of started going around. Yeah. So that's, that's great. Right. And, you know, we trademarked, uh, we, we have the, uh, the trademark for water is life. And so, I had uh, several people that would send me notes and say, hey, uh, are, you, are you mad these guys are using water as life? I said, why should I? That's the truth. Water is life. We need, we need to let people know that. And uh, <laughs> they were less than, less than tickled to death with me. But does this need to be in, an, in a Chrome tab to be able to show or will it show up on screen? David, that has lost care. Uh, follow these steps. Uh, shoot. Okay. I obviously uh, have technical difficulties. You could, <laughs> yeah, yeah, you could use a, a Chrome tab if you're on your Zoom in a Chrome tab. You have to just. I'm on your whatever the stream you have thing to share is. The screen yeah. then. Yeah, I'm on this. The, the yeah, when you yard. share the screen. Uh, Alice. Reference security. Alice is my. Uh, uh, oh, she said. Alice said Chrome tab. Chrome tab. Well, it's running in Keynote, so I'm not sure how to run it into a Chrome tab. Uh, Alice, let's okay. see here. Uh, uh, Alice Ken wants to share the screen. Uh, uh, yes. Chrome tab is best. However, application. Can you hear us, uh, Alice? Yes, I can. Yeah, I can hear you. Uh, um, allow the app isn't to there, the uh, content. He could share application and he could share screen. He has choices. Well, I hit I hit screen share and it says share the screen 
I click the application window and I go over to Keynote and it says Chrome has lost permission to capture your screen. Follow these steps. So then ch choose the Chrome tab instead of application. Uh, well, but it's not in a Chrome tab, honey. It's it's in it's then in share screen instead. Okay, well, that's what I was trying to do. So let's see, share screen. Share entire screen. Let's just do that. <laughs> it won't let me do that. Okay, follow the share. steps. Ay, 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 ay. Okay. <laughs> that, that's called technology. We're all learning, uh, Ken, from this. Yeah. Uh, Sorry, guys. Yeah. We might have to go back to Zoom. We do. We go in between. Sometimes Zoom works for us. Sometimes StreamYard. <laughs> Zoom works. Yeah, Zoom works a whole lot better for me. But that's you know that's just, just my deal. So, uh, yeah. yeah, I was trying to trying to get it to do it, but it won't. Um, it's not going to let me. Warn. Uh... Interesting. Uh, she, uh... Sherry, uh, tell me um, a little bit about your story because uh, Sherry is one of the three peacemakers of us. Myself, I'm one. Sherry is another. Tell me about your experience. Why you went to Standing Rock to protect the water? So um, while Ken yeah. is uh, trying to um, figure this out. <laughs> oh wow! Uh, what was the calling, Sherry? What was the calling? Well, that that calling was definitely a, a spirit a spirit led calling, um, you know, I, my ancestry. So my mom, Marianne Flores is Lipan Apache, Kola Tekikin, and, uh, Scott Irish. My father is Welsh, uh, Clarence Henry Lewis Jr. He's gone on his way now. Um, yeah. And so my ancestry has, was just very strong within me. Um, the way that, I grew up, though, I, I saw the colonization in my own home. Uh, God rest my father's my father's soul. He he definitely uh, was doing what he had been taught. Um, but I witnessed things with the transformation put on to onto my mother. And anyway, um, it's something that I really can't even put into words. It was just through my life. I've I've had my ancestors that have been there. And it wasn't though until later in my life um, when I really started listening a lot better uh, and tuning in and, and realizing the way that the walk and purpose was supposed to be directed through my life as a, as a mother and now as, as a grandmother. So it was definitely um, a calling through spirit. And I had gone through a major tragedy um, right before I went to Standing Rock. And um, I made a call to my Shema. And it was in the sense of, you know, speaking over how our people were going to start rising by the hundreds and and the th hundreds, thousands, and just really coming together and the unity that needed to happen to protect our water, to protect our humanity. And of course, water is one of the biggest fundamentals of all humanity, right? So uh, that message just came in clearly and I shared it and I was invited to come to Standing Rock. Um, and the walk has not stopped, not has not slowed down uh, and has continued, continued ever since with my relatives and my extended relatives and finding uh, my own ancestry through the assimilation process so that our culture went through um yeah so did, did it was the water or, that's did, how i ended there ended up there did the water call you to go to standing or, or the people called you you think so how i was putting that david was in the sense that Water is the life source. It's the veins for Mother Earth for our humanity. So the call was for humanity and protecting our humanity, which the water is the main source of life, you know, between air and, and our water. So the call 
uh, came for humanity and for protection of humanity as a whole and coming together with our nations. And that encompasses the water hugely. Yes. Mm -hmm. so that's, that's what that is. Yeah. So, oh, the presentation is uh, hopefully is coming on. Did you um, see? Can, can you see it? I see water yes, is like we can see it. And I think, I'm, I think I'm frozen again. <laughs> oh, <I'm> no. Just... <laughs> <laughs> but I will hop right back in. I'll hop right back in and we'll start the presentation. No problem. So Thanks. Can, can you want to start uh, your presentation? You bet. You bet. Well, what, one of the things that I'd like to start with is just kind of sharing my story a little bit. And it all okay. began standing naked in a shower in Nairobi. I don't know if you can can see the feet in the shower, but uh, uh, I'm I'm assuming that everything's working okay. Are you are you able to see this the slides advance? Yes, very clearly. Ken Stone. Okay. All right. Great. Great. Well, I was uh, up in the northern part of Kenya, South Sudan, working with the uh, Turkana people group, um, nomadic group of people, beautiful folks, um, absolutely amazing uh, people, but uh, definitely, um, definitely hurting uh, in the areas, especially of water, but just basic life needs. Um, and I became overwhelmed. You know, we we would come across kids begging for water alongside the road. We took a big Rota tank full and we would stop along the way and we'd fill up these little kids' bottles with water. And it was like they were running back to their little hut with um, with a bag of gold. I mean, it was a precious resource. And um, one of the things um, that really touched me was just seeing their response to how precious water was to them. Um, I'm, you know, I, I love little kids. We've built a bunch of orphanages around the world. And um, I love kids and love monkeying around with them. And it's a little boy uh, this lady had. He was about a year, year and a half old. And I'm talking to him. We're playing. And I'm getting him to laugh and giggle and stuff. And then I threw an interpreter. I asked the mom, you know, some questions. I asked her one question. Then she gets this really puzzled look on her face. And she turns back to the um the interpreter and she tells him some information that the interpreter looks at me and says, uh, the question I asked was, what's his name? And when that questioned look came on her face, I was going, uh oh, I may must have asked the wrong question or done something wrong. And um, uh, he said, uh, Ken, he says, the little boy doesn't have a name. Uh, he's, you know, he, he will probably die. I said, what? I said, yeah, the reality that these people live in is, is that one in five children in sub-Saharan Africa will die before they reach the age of five. Um, so, you know, those kind of things start as you're processing them and going back. Um, there are a lot of things that happened. And I'm standing there in the shower watching the water go down the drain. And that's when it hit me. Ken, water is life here. Um, the people would give anything to have the water you're just letting go down the drain. And at that point, I made a decision. I had a great idea, you know, bring water to these people. But, you know, that aha moment for me standing in the shower wasn't enough. You've got to take that sudden realization, that aha moment and turn it into something that makes a difference and makes an impact. Like the folks at Standing Rock, they're making a statement, they're making an impact. Um, because they've chosen to take action on an idea. Um, so for for me, you know, um, while I'm watching that water go down the drain and the realization that we could bring water to these people, a few months later, I went back, drilled my first well, and now we're in over 47 countries around the world with water, sanitation, and hygiene. And I want to introduce you to a really cute little guy. This is my buddy. This is Kaitoli. Kaitoli is um, a little Maasai boy. Um, he is uh, four, year, four years old at this point. And um, one of the things that we wanted to do was communicate um, the information, which is horrible information, you know, one in five children dying before they reach the age of five, um, but do it in a positive way. And so I don't know if you guys remember the movie, The Bucket List, but um, it had Jack Nicholson and Morgan Freeman, and there are two old guys in the hospital, and they were writing down all of these things they wanted to do before they kicked the bucket, hence the bucket list. 
And so we took a little spin on that. And what we did is we created uh, a four-year-old bucket list, if you will. So this is Kai Tolley's story. What's been really cool about Kaitoli's little story is he's been able to um, to influence a lot of people around the world. Millions of people have seen his little story and a lot of people have gotten involved and they've donated. And so we've been able to drill water wells in his area. Um, in fact, there's Kaitoli getting some water for his animals right there. Um, and we've been, the hit, because of the response, we've been able to drill uh, not only a super deep water well right there in his village, but also put distribution points inside to other villages all around um, the area there and to a school that's there. Um, just a little bit about the footprint of Water's Life and the global impact. Uh, we are very excited about um, what, uh, what the new days um, and uh, the next this next year promises to hold for us we deal with two key areas water quality and water scarcity uh, water scarcity would mean that there is no water um, a well's dried up or a river's dried up a aquifer's dried up um, water quality is dealing with what most of us deal with and that is you know because we live close to water we um, we have it, but it's not safe to drink. In fact, uh, in, an, in the United States, a third of the US lives with lead, lead levels that exceed EPA standards. Most people don't realize that. That's 110 million people living with lead levels in their water that exceed EPA standards. Just to give you a, a quick overview, 97% of the, um, the, or excuse me, 97% uh, of the water on the planet is salt water. Uh, our planet's covered in 75% water. Um, of that, it, most of that is in our oceans. We have 2% of the fresh water that's in the polarized caps. And that leaves uh, seven and a half billion people in climbing competing for less than 1% of the surface water that's available on the planet. Um, we are definitely in a crisis as we see cities blacking out. There's uh, close to 2 billion people who don't have access to safe drinking water today. So for us at Waters Life, we have a variety of different um, tools, techniques, and um, things that we use to bring uh, people the, the water that they need. These are some of our little uh, straw filters that we provide to a lot of students around the world um, that provides um, about 500 liters of water uh, through a little straw system uh, that uh, makes the water safe to drink, killing the, uh, 
capturing the bacteria and uh, viruses out of the water. We also use some nanotechnology and create real simple filters. We do a lot of drilling. Um, we also have some solar and wind powered water treatment plants that um, got about 500 of those around the world, uh, providing uh, millions of uh, liters of water every day. Um, this is from an installation up in um, Tibet uh, that we did uh, two, uh, two years ago. Um, we also have some new technology that's coming out. This is a atmospheric water generator that we have created uh, that captures water from the air and, um, and uses that water uh, then to, um, to provide safe drinking water for the communities. Uh, at Water's Life, we believe in the power of social media so much so um, because we've seen firsthand what can happen. Uh, we took a, um, a popular hashtag from uh, Twitter um, now we all love uh, social media. You know, we take pictures of our cat and our dog and the food we ate this morning. We put it on Facebook and Twitter and Instagram, and we do all of those things. So, you know, it's 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 fun playing with it, but it's also a great tool uh, that we can that we can use. But what we did was we took a, a hashtag that was real popular a couple of years ago called First World Problems, and those First World Problems, those whiny little things that. Most people nag and complain about in a third in a first world country. The people in the third world country are going, what is that really what you're what you're upset about? And so this is the anthem commercial from um, the first world problems hashtag killer we created. A pretty amazing, uh, pretty amazing little guy there at the end. His name's Ricardo. He's one of the students uh, there in the orphanage in uh, Haiti that we help. And um, uh, pretty amazing story. That uh, that whole campaign um, was created by a group out of New York, all pro bono. Uh, they came over to Haiti and uh, filmed for a few days and helped us with the drilling project and did all kinds of stuff. Um, and then. Um, uh, created that. It's been um, the last report I got. It's been uh, viewed over 300 or no, over 750 million times, almost uh, a billion uh, views on that. Um, 
One of the things that impacted me early on um, was a gentleman named Zig Ziglar. He's a motivational speaker that really touched me when I was in my 20s. He made the statement. He says, you can get everything in, you, in, everything in life that you want if you just help enough other people get what they want. Um, one of the things that, that differentiates Waters Life from other groups and organizations is that we take volunteers with us. We want people to go, to roll up their sleeves, to get involved, to go help bring water into a community and to make it possible for a community to have the, the life's basic building block, and that's water. And it's amazing when you're able to see the lights come on for people that maybe have never gone overseas before or never helped out on a mission project and uh, help to take care of you know uh, needs of people. It, it's amazing to see how um, the the lights come on for them, and it makes a huge difference and a huge impact in their life. Um, let's see here. Go ahead and stop that. Um, but um, for for us at Waters Life, what we want to do is our our goal is to end the world water crisis, whether it's through utilizing some simple technology uh, that eliminates. Um, uh, bacteria and viruses from drinking water to community-wide systems that will bring um, hope and help to so many people. As of today, we've um, we've given out over uh, six billion liters of water um, on or excuse me on our website. It says five billion liters of water. It's actually about double that, but um, we keep it down because we figure about half of what's uh, you know everything gets used about half of what you think it's going to get used. So it's pretty amazing. Um, the amount of lives that we're able to touch was just something as simple as uh, maybe a straw filter or coming into their community with some home systems that would uh, provide safe drinking water for them. Uh, thank you so much for that, uh, Ken, um, yeah, from you the bet. foundation and your dream. And we can see uh, the progression of your dream uh, from um, just an idea to to something that saves millions of lives is because um, you know what um, uh, polluted water. A lot of people do not know uh, takes uh, probably uh, how many lives does it uh, uh, are how many people are dying from clean water uh, today. Or, today there'll be six thousand. Yeah, today there'll be six thousand people die because of unsafe drinking water. It's amazing. Yeah, we cannot let um, that happen, right? right. No. We, we live in a world with, uh, with an abundance of um, material wealth. Um, we have technology. We just need the resources and the people that are willing to roll up their sleeves and go do something. Um, we have some amazing people that work uh, with Waters Life all around the world. We've got some uh, really great things that are happening in South and Central America right now. Um, we are working with uh, several different groups um, to provide, hang on just a second, <laughs> to provide um, uh, some uh, relief for groups here in the United States. We're working with the cities in, in California right now. I've worked with the Navajo Nation. Um, I, I am uh, part Cherokee, so I have a real passion. We live here in um, in close to the capital of the Cherokee Nation. So it's been an amazing journey for us to see the need for water, um, the respect for water that some people have, but the, the total lack of respect that a lot of people do. We throw stuff still in the river and say, well, somebody else will have to deal with that downstream. But yet we all should be responsible for what we put uh, into the water um, and, uh, and what we take out of the water. Um, what we want to do is we want to just help people raise awareness to what the needs are globally around the world, um, as well as what's happening here at home. Uh, that, that's great. Um, uh, also, interesting is that, you know, uh, from the Creators 2030, or Listen, Give Initiative, who is our partner helping us uh, organize this event, uh, Gail Davis is a uh, 50% Cherokee. Ah, uh, yeah. So there's a huge, there's a, yeah. So you, you have a, a sister. Here. Awesome. That's <laughs> also, fantastic. That's fantastic. David, are there uh, also, questions? Yeah. That you may have for, uh, for us at Waters Life? Uh, yes. 
Yeah, so the, the main thing is that uh, we're looking to uh, more indigenous, uh, you know, yeah. to help more indigenous and uh, communities. Um, mm -hmm. And our goal is that, and we want to partner with uh, Waters Life to be able to do that because by uniting and uh, sharing resources uh, and uh, manpower, I think we can uh, end this uh, water crisis of uh, uh, much more quickly than working alone. Uh, right, Sherry? Exactly. Well, yes, one of the things that I often say, um, Ken, is I could, I was very happy to see what you were putting out as I was going back and forth with these technical difficulties now operating off my phone. So thank you. Oh, no. <laughs> um, but, but one of the things that I definitely wanted to mention is I often say that I believe that water kills more people than guns. You know, everybody talks about guns and it's this, but actually our water is our life source and really is bringing so much trauma over people's lives because um, of us as human beings, not necessarily uh, working in the ways that, that we should are some. Exactly. You know, right. And it's, it's a responsibility so I, uh, I am very honored. To, to yeah, to your point, Sherry, I was sitting with some of the executives of Johnson & Johnson not too long ago, and they give over a billion dollars to hospitals and clinics globally around the world. And I, I said, guys, I said, I know you're passionate about hospitals, and I know that you know this is something that's one of your projects. I said, but you know, we could empty most of the hospital beds today by doing one thing. And they looked at me like I had horns. And I said, look, 75 to 80 percent of the hospital beds in developing countries right now, according to the World Health Organization, are occupied by people that have waterborne disease. We bring one thing. We bring safe water to the people and we eradicate most of the people that are in hospital beds today won't be there and they're able to deal with other things. It's a it's a huge global health problem. When you have you know children dying every 21 seconds because of waterborne disease, it is a crisis. Yes, I agree with you. I agree with you. And here uh, we have like you were touching on that as well. You know, it's just different a different environment that is causing the water crises in certain ways, uh, but still crisis is happening very much so in our communities here as well that have been covered up. And you think, you know, wow, how is this even happening? I mean, oil spills where they'll yeah. not report it and take gravel and just fill it right over the gravel. Fill it right back up, yep. Fill it right there and you can stick your arm through the gravel, pull it up and your arm's covered in oil. The fish yep. have tumors, the dogs are getting tumors, the people are getting sick. Uh, so it's, it's a thing. And, you know, like I said, in on Navajo Nation right now, or with our, in, our with our Diné relatives, we have the uranium in the water, the arsenic yep. in the water, you know, so there's definitely, um, we have so much to address with our life and for all humanity. And when I say humanity, that includes our wildlife as well. Yep. Our uh, game is poisoned, you know, and, and I also will talk about the correlation with the gut and the brain and mm -hmm. how, you know, now calling uh, Alzheimer's diabetes three and yeah. how, what we put into our system, how you were speaking on that, what we put into our system affects our whole body. So yes. if we're eating poisonous foods, right. And the water source isn't correct or our game is getting poisoned from fracking then it's going to not it's going to affect us all the way around including our minds yes so I one of the things that's a that's a great tool um if um if people want to go look up and see what's in their water um mm -hmm. there is a there is a site it's um ewg.org hang on here let me see if i can throw this up real quick um, yeah, so ewg.org will tell you what's in your water. Um, you, what you do is you put your, um, let's see here. I can get that back over to, there it is. Yeah, um, 
I don't know if you can, can you see that? Um, what's in your water? Uh, okay. Let's now go check. I can. Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. If you can, if you, um, if you can go to that website, there is a place um, where you can click and you can look at your water. Um, you just put in your zip code. You don't have to put in your name, address, or anything like that. You just put in your zip code and then choose your local water so uh, water supply. Um, you'll be fascinated by what is in the water. Um, a lot of it is, um, there'll be agricultural things. There'll be things that we add to the water to make it kind of better. And yet we wind up uh, putting carcinogens in the water that <laughs> are gonna kill us all. So it's it's really, it's really uh, eye-opening to be right. able to look in there to see what's in your water. But like we have great water here, but there are six carcinogens that are added to our water to kind of make it safe. And I'm going, hold it, you're putting cancer causing chemicals mm -hmm. in our water to keep it clean to the from the from the, the the water treatment plant to the tap. It just doesn't make any sense. In one of the greenest countries in the world, we do some work down in Costa Rica um, with some people right there that are disenfranchised along the Panamanian Panamanian uh, and Costa Rican border. And um, they they have um, they're one of the greenest planets in, or one of the greenest countries in the or countries. They um, are 100% renewable energy, and yet they have the second highest rate of stomach cancer in the world per capita because wow. of the chlorine that's added to their drinking water. Because of the pipes and the infrastructure, they throw a lot of chlorine in the water. That chlorine then sets up a carcinogenic environment in your body, and your body responds to it. Water uh, and the right kind of water is in, is critically important to all of us. One of the things that I encourage people to do is look at your water and then look at alternatives, what you can do. Um, how can you raise the pH in the water? How can you remove the uh, contaminants in the water and make it safer and better for yourself? If we, you know, we're at a 7.5 pH, we drink water that's below 7.5 and it creates a carcinogenic, a carcinogenic environment in our bodies. We drink it above uh, 7.5 and it helps to combat cancer in our bodies. I mean, it's just one of those things that happens. Eating the right kinds of foods, drinking the right kind of water, uh, it all makes sense. Thank you guys for what you're just doing. We really appreciate it, man. Just to be aware, can uh, Sherry also yes. use a lot of water because she is um, a formulator uh, for cosmetics and she uh, the water is so important to her. Oh, yeah. And she has her own cosmetic a beauty line at uh, difference.green. Um, and yeah, so she, she's really into water, a different type of structure water and uh, right. learning more, uh, actually learning more about water. But you find out all those chemicals that we throw in our water are not good for the cosmetics either. Well, she's frozen it's, again, it's, unfortunately. I think we lost. Her. Yeah, actually, yeah. Actually, actually, I want to touch on that though a little bit, David. I actually don't use water at all in my formulation. Um, <laughs> so I, I, uh, but I do, you know for the intake and obviously for taking care of your health and walking in the line that we, we cannot hear you uh, well and water uh, should be available and even uh, be the lightest where children are dying right now because of the water how much we can actually bring to the table. Uh, one of the things that I did start recently was a petition called Friendly for Humanity Technology that benefits us because we have technology that is at us, but a lot of this technology is actually aiding to the pollution. And I'm, you know, talking about radiation. Yeah. Oh, you can't hear me? Can you hear no, me now? It's, it's breaking up. Yeah, but we've got you now. Yeah. Yeah, it's uh, with this uh, technology of Wi-Fi and everything. Sorry, can, uh, er, er, can you hear me? Is, yes. Me? Yeah, you're breaking up, uh, Sherry. Maybe you should try to turn off your video just to we can hear, hear you. 
What about now? No. Did I? I think, uh, Ken, um, yeah. so thank you so much for hey, thank uh, you guys. Coming, coming on, and we'd like to partner with you more closely because we're bringing 1,000 Indigenous nations together to create a new federation of nations, and water should, at, is at the center of it, you know, so. Absolutely, and it, absolutely. And you look at you look at the SDGs according to the United Nations. Everything really is pivotal around water, in my opinion. Um, and so, um, you know, we're honored to to be here today with you. Look forward to working with you in the future. If people need more information, uh, they can find us on um, Facebook, Instagram, on the World Wide Web. Waterislife.com uh, is our web address. Um, but we'd love to uh, love to begin a conversation with others that are like-minded or who have needs. Um, we have been uh, working off on and off with the Navajo Nation now for a couple of years and uh, look forward to our work continuing with them and, and other indigenous groups here within the United States. But we thank you, David, for what you guys are doing, uh, bringing awareness uh, and helping to educate people uh, about um, the impact that water can have. But thank you guys for your, uh, for your time today. I think, thank you. There. Just a last question, you know, to add to our yes, blueprint. Sir. For oh, I'm, I'm here, guys. <laughs> <laughs> She's Can back. You hear me? I came what back once like through my computer this blueprint? time. Oh, my it's God. It's going towards the United Nations, and it's go this blueprint's going to nations, and also all the indigenous uh, communities worldwide that will be implementing this blueprint. What would you like to put in that blueprint? Fantastic. Um, I think probably for, uh, from, uh, yeah, from our perspective, can you hear me? I think David froze now. <laughs> oh, <okay. laughs> but I yeah. speak to you and then I want to touch on what we were talking about before I froze, but yes. Oh, sorry, Ken. Yeah. The, to us, um, you know, it's, it's the people that make, um, uh, make this possible. Um, you know, we can bring technology, we can, you know, bring certain things to different groups and organ organizations, but it's the people within, once they make that jump, um, uh, once they are able to um, provide for themselves, you know, we, we try to build into what we're doing, the opportunity for, uh, for people to regain dignity because, you know, we can give the man a fish, um, and he eats for a day. We can teach a man to fish and he'll eat the rest of his lifetime. And so what our goal is, is to help to help those people locally uh, to be able to make a better life for themselves. If we can be a tool and an asset to them, that's great. We can help uh, make recommendations and that's great. But um, it really comes back to uh, each individual and uh, tapping into the heart of the people that um, that we're working with. So my encouragement on the blueprint is um, don't don't just mass people, uh, but deal with the individuals, deal with individual communities, uh, individual homes, and one on one with people. But uh, thank you guys, Sherry, David. Thank you for all that you're doing, and we look forward uh, to uh, taking you with us on a trip one day with Waters Life. Oh well, thank you so much for that. And uh, yes, and, and I think that you'll find in, in our regions here, we're up a little bit uh, more of a different kind of obstacle um, in certain ways because you have the responsiveness of the people, but you have certain uh, bureaucracies that have to sure. and challenges on that end uh, yep. that, are, that unfortunately are holding our people back here. So. Right. Um, but yes, I... I take you up on the, the offer and am up for the, for the challenges of uh, walking in this way and, and getting clean water to our global community around the world. So fantastic. Thank you guys. Look forward to uh, the days ahead, working together with you. Blessings to you. Thank you so much. All right. Oh, David. So we're so. back. Yes, we're back. So, okay. uh, the, the, next, the, the next segment is that we're going to put uh, put on some music for people to enjoy. Uh, right. The two musicians that we 
put on is uh, Ed Coban and um, uh, Joanne Shenandoah, who was, they were both kind enough to provide us with a pre-recorded video that they made uh, for us. And we're gonna play that. Uh, they are Grammy Award and NAMI uh, Native American Award winning uh, artists. They are some of the most renowned uh, indigenous uh, musicians in the world. Renowned, that means that they're, they're well known. It doesn't mean that they're, they're the best. It's as many indigenous uh, musicians who are really great, but uh, they have been able to have that breakthrough to the mainstream uh, music world. Uh, and I would like to correct you on that, that David. Uh, they are one of the best. So they, they are the best in their own right and one of the best. So we are very, very happy to play their music and have them on. Okay, let's, uh, let's hear their music. <laughs> 